Today we're going to be talking about two important and fundamental concepts in managing your Magi account. The first one we'll talk about is workspaces. What are they? How do we manage them? What do they do? And we're going to talk about teams or the team and plan that you have signed up with when you first signed up for Magi. Now, the first thing we're talking about is workspaces. The best way to think about it is to think about file cabinets. So let's say you have one file cabinet where you keep all of a particular type of file and information. And then you have a separate file cabinet where you keep other types of information. Workspaces work in the same way. When you first sign up for Magi, a workspace is automatically created for you. And you are actively using that workspace whenever you use Magi. And you can see that active workspace in the bottom left-hand corner of your sidebar. So that means that whenever you are in a workspace and you create a chat or you create an image or a prompt or a persona, those items are kept within that workspace, almost like a file cabinet, like we said. So if you were to change the workspace and go to a different workspace, all of those chats, images, personas, and workspaces would not be in that new workspaces. You would have a whole different set of uh, different items. So let's head over to the workspaces area. Now I've only got one workspace in this account because I haven't created any alternatives. So let's create a new workspace. Again, I've gone to the workspaces tab and all you have to do is click new workspace and you have some options here. You can give the workspace a name and really that's all you need. You don't need to fill anything else other than the name. We'll just call this workspace two. Now, these other options are really just for more advanced use cases. So custom context is something we should all be familiar with, just in case you're not. Custom con context is this idea of this is information that you want the AI to have every time you start a conversation with it. So if you have a business, you probably want it to know this business information every time you start a new conversation. You don't want to have to keep informing it of this information that um, that is vital to whatever task you needed to do. So this is just a place where you can add that custom context so that the AI is aware of and knows this information every single time that you start a conversation when using or, or active in this workspace. And the same way you can upload files, documents, PDFs uh, that will be accessible by the AI in every new conversation. So if you have custom oper standard operating procedures or anything really that you want the AI to have access to knowledge wise, you can upload directly to the workspace. And again, will be available in every single conversation that the AI has when in this workspace. You can also upload a logo just in case you wanna more easily identify your workspace from the list of available workspaces. So I'm just gonna create one with a name and not give it anything else. You'll see it's now added to my available workspaces. And if I click on the workspace selector in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see that I have both workspaces accessible from here. Now, just again, to kind of demonstrate what the purpose of this is, you'll notice I'm currently in Dustin's workspace and I can see the chats that I've created for that workspace. And the minute I change over to workspace number two, you'll notice that there are no chats there because I haven't created any in that workspace yet. And so again, this idea that you can kind of silo off your different projects, you can silo off maybe different clients that you're working with, and that way the content that you're creating for those different projects or clients or departments, they don't get intermingled, they don't get mixed together, and um, you keep your life just a little bit more organized. Think of it almost like a very top level folder, so to speak. Now at any given time, you can go back to the workspaces tab and you can edit that workspace. You can change the custom context that you've added. You can change the workspace name. You can change the logo that you've uploaded. You can um, add new files. You can delete old files. And just to show you how that works, I can just click on the add new files uh, link here and I can drop in a new file if I wanted to give it some test information for demonstration purposes. Once that file is done uploading, you can hit the upload button. button, And now that uh, PDF or whatever you uploaded is gonna be available for all chats started in that, um, in that workspace. And if you wanted to delete it, you can always hit the delete button and it'll delete that file from the knowledge. 
Now, there may be instances where you have a workspace that is dedicated to a specific set of tasks, or maybe you want to give certain team members, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, access to workspaces that have limited functionality. For example, uh, I have a workspace on my personal team account uh, for my kids, and we like to create fun stories with the AI, and I love to teach them how to use AI responsibly, and we like to create funny photos. Um, and it's a lot of fun, and I like to give them access to that workspace, but I also want to limit some of the features that they have access to in there. So we have a section here called Default Content Access Rules for Team Members, and this means you can change the permissions for all team members so that they have access to some things and not others. So for example, uh, my kids don't really have need for accessing prompts inside of their workspace, and so if this were their workspace, I could simply turn these off and then they would no longer have access to saved prompts in that workspace. Likewise, if uh, they don't need access to images, I can remove that ability as well. And these permissions, you can, you can give them view access only, you can allow them to add or edit, and uh, as far as delete. So think of these as layers of permissions. View being the very lowest layer of, of access, and then as you go higher, they have more and more um, capabilities. And so you can kind of control that for all team members. Now, what if you wanted to have specific permissions for only a specific user or a set of users? Well, this is where the content access rule exceptions come in. You can create a new access rule that will apply only to certain users. So let's say you wanted a certain user to be able to only view images. So you would select the type of content from the list, images in this case, and decide what level of permissions you want to give them. And let's say I only wanted them to be able to view, but not add or edit or delete. And then I would select that user I want that rule to apply to, and I can hit save. And so now you see I have a content access rule exception. So this person is an exception to the rule and or the users who are in that group. So you can see that they have uh, the type of rule it relates to is for images and the permissions they have is view, and the users it applies to is Bruce in this case, and the last data is modified. So you can go in and you can edit that rule again, you can delete that rule, uh, and it's all done from right here in the workspaces edit view. Always save the workspace just in case, and uh, if you ever need to delete a workspace, you can do that right from here as well. Um, you can also use the delete icon right here also. Uh, before I talk about that though, you can also share workspaces with team members. Again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about team members later, but if you wanted to give a user access to a workspace, you can do that. Uh, again, workspaces by default, they are uh, they're private by default, so any users that are on your team will not have access to a workspace unless you give it to them. So if I were to create a workspace three here and save it, you'll see that uh, currently no users have access to that workspace, but I can easily grant it to them if I like, and uh, along with whatever permissions that I wanna give them. Now, when deleting a workspace, you'll notice that you get a, a pop-up here that gives you some options because if you delete a workspace, you need to do something with all the content that you created in that workspace. So where are all those chats and images gonna go if you delete that workspace? They need to go somewhere. So you'll be able to choose which workspace you wanna send all of that content to so that they now have a new place to live. Once you've selected the workspace you wanna migrate that content to, you can click delete workspace and all of that content will be automatically migrated in the background and that old workspace will be deleted. And again, switching between workspaces is as simple as hitting the button and selecting the workspace you wanna change over to. Now, let's talk about Teams. Uh, just like workspaces, when you sign up for Magi, a team is automatically created for you. And the team is actually the entity that your plan is attached to. So when it, whatever plan you selected, uh, that team is now associated with that plan, and the team then has access to whatever those plan uh, limitations are. So I'm gonna head over to the Teams page, and here we can see a little bit more about this team that was created for us. So by default, it will have given you a, a team name and you as the team owner can click to edit that team name uh, however you want and hit save the changes. You can name that team as you like. And below that, you'll be able to invite new members. So if you wanted to invite somebody to your team, if you're on a professional plan or above, 
If you're on a personal plus plan, you won't have the ability to add team members because it's only a solo user plan. But all the other plans do allow you to add a number of users. And you can do that just by typing their email address and clicking the send invite button. Once you click that send invite button, you'll have a few more options to sort of customize this invite to that team member. Now, the first thing you'll see here is you can allow them to create their own workspaces, allow workspace creation. If you want them to be able to create their own workspaces, you can check that box and give them that ability. Otherwise, if you don't want them to create workspaces, you just want to limit them to the workspaces you create as the team owner. Make sure that that box is unchecked. And then you can decide which workspaces they will have access to when they accept your invite. And so uh, just select the workspace that you want them to have access to and uh, or use the select all button if you want to select all workspaces and then you can kind of uncheck them if you need to. Now, the last thing that is uh, completely optional here is if you want to limit them to a number of words per month. So since all plans have a limited number of words they, they have in a given month, you can limit that user to however many words you want. So if you only wanted to give them 10,000 words per month, you can set that up right from here. If you don't add any value to the list, then they're just going to have uh, you know, unlimited use just like you do. Uh, once you're ready, you can hit send invite. And what's going to happen now is that user is going to get an invitation email. And in that email, they'll have a button that they can click to accept that invite. If they've never created a Magi team before, it's very, very, or a Magi account before, it's very easy. All they have to do is add their first name, their last name, and create a password. And then they'll log in right to your team and be able to get to work. If they already have a Magi account, they'll simply need to log in and accept that invite. Um, and if for whatever reason they're not getting the email, uh, because you know, maybe it was caught in a spam or junk folder, you can actually copy the invite link by clicking the little link icon next to their pending um, invite team member uh, listing here. You can send that link to them and they can use that link to uh, accept your invitation. And if for whatever reason you want to remove them, remove that invite, you can click the delete button and remove that invite and they won't be able to join your team. So scrolling down the page here, just some other things that you can see. You can manage the plan that you're on. So right in the billing section, you'll see what your current Magi plan is. You'll see what uh, the payment period ending is. And you'll be able to click on the Manage Billing button if you need to update your card information or you need to upgrade or downgrade your plan. You can do that from there. And you can also cancel your plan right from here if you need to. Uh, and lastly, the change plan section just gives you a visual of all the diff different plans that are available. If you need to upgrade or downgrade, you can change this slider to adjust how many words you need in a given month and see the plans that fit your needs. You'll also be able to upgrade or downgrade as needed. So you'll see, be able to see which plan is your current plan and what options are available to upgrade and downgrade. You can also toggle between monthly and yearly to see if maybe you want to upgrade to a yearly plan and save a little extra money by paying for the full year in advance. Now, just to give you an idea of what your team members will see when they log in, uh, they will uh, be able to access your team page, but they won't see any of the other options. All they'll be able to see from that page is you know, who the other team members are. They won't be able to edit any of the settings or change your billing or any of that or any of the permissions. Once that team member has accepted your invite, you'll see them here on the list and you'll be able to see what usage limit you've set to them, if any, what their current amount of usage is, and uh, whether or not they're allowed to create workspaces, and you can always change that at any time, turn that on or off. If you want to modify or adjust or add a usage limit, you can click the usage limit button there, and you can uh, change the value there as needed, save those changes, and they'll apply immediately to that user. In the top left corner, just also wanted to point out that you can see how many total members you've invited out of the number that your plan allows. And so this account that I'm on here allows a total of five users. So you can see that I've currently added two out of the five allowed users. Once I've added five total users, including myself, I won't be able to add any more users unless I upgrade my plan. Now, lastly, I wanted to go over usage. And if you click on the usage page over here in the left in the sidebar, You'll, you'll get a breakdown of how many words you've currently used from your monthly allocated usage. You'll get a, a little percentage bar here indicating how much, uh, and then a percentage uh, number down in the bottom left corner, and then how many total words you have uh, according to your plan. 
You'll also get an idea of how many days are left in your plan cycle so you know when that plan will reset and you'll get a fresh batch of new word usage for the month. Now, what happens if you actually hit that word usage in a given month? Are you locked out for the rest of the month? Do you have to wait uh, you know, a full 15 days or however many days into your plan resets? Uh, no, we're not like some of those other companies uh, that will uh, force you to wait and have to stop working until that reset happens. We give you a couple of different options where you can continue working seamlessly without having to wait. The first option obviously is to upgrade your plan. Now, simply by subscribing to a higher level plan, you'll get prorated and get that new monthly word usage added immediately to your plan so you can continue working. And of course, you can downgrade at any time after that uh, next billing cycle. However, if you just need a simple little boost in words, you can hit the top up button. The top up button gives you access to the ability to add five, 10 or $20 worth of word usage. Uh, in a quick and simple payment. Click on the button and you'll be sent to a little payment form where you can uh, quickly add $5, $10, or $20 worth of word usage. And that's it for this week, keeping it super simple, helping you to better manage your team, your workspaces, and your monthly usage as needed. Hope that was helpful for you. And of course, as always, if you have any follow-up questions, please reach out to our team.